How can Guyana defeat a Venezuelan invasion with $50 million in weapons? Guyana and Venezuela border have been a point of friction especially since the massive discovery of oil in Guyana in 2015. We have made a video explaining this controversy earlier. If you have not seen that video yet, it will show up on your screen now. This is part 2 of that video, so watch that one if you haven't already and at the end this video will be waiting there. In this video, we will look at how Guyana can defeat a Venezuelan invasion with 50 million US dollars in weapons. The weapons that we will look at will be aimed at providing Guyana with an asymmetric advantage over Venezuela especially in a war of attrition if it ever happens. According to General George Smith Patton, a pint of sweat will save a gallon of blood, and in Guyana's case money. Let's get into the weapons list that Guyana should get to defeat a Venezuelan invasion. Barrett M82 is a semi-automatic anti-material rifle. The Barrett M82 is a semi-automatic anti-material rifle, designed and developed by Barrett Firearms Manufacturing Company. Development of this powerful anti-material rifle began in the early 1980s. Working versions were ready by 1982, hence the designation M82. It is worth noting that the M82 is a company designation, rather than a US military designation. The company successfully sold 100 rifles to Swedish armed forces in 1989. In 1990-1991 US Marine Corps obtained around 125 of these rifles. Soon followed orders from the US Army and Air Force. Today this anti-material rifle is in service with nearly 60 countries and used by military and law enforcement forces. In a number of countries this anti-material rifle is used as a long-range anti-personnel sniper weapon. This rifle was designed to destroy sensitive enemy equipment, like parked aircraft, radar units, trucks and various other important assets at long range. It is used for remote destruction of explosive ordnance. Even though it was originally designed as an anti-material rifle, the Barrett M82 is also used as a long-range sniper rifle. It can neutralize enemy snipers at standoff range. This rifle can be also used to hit enemy soldiers, that are hiding behind cover and walls, as its powerful ammunition can penetrate through bricks and concrete. However the Barrett M82 is primarily used as anti-material weapon. The Barrett M82 is chambered for powerful 12.7 by 99 .50 BMG, ammunition. This ammunition was originally developed for and used in Browning M2 heavy machine gun. Sometimes the Barrett M82 is referred as light 50 for its cartridge. This weapon has a unique recoil reduction mechanism. The muzzle brake is said to absorb 70% of the recoil. It reduces the forces acting on internal mechanisms in the shooter. This weapon is fed from 10 round detachable magazines. The Barrett M82 was often fitted with 10x magnification scope. This weapon can be also used with night vision scopes. There is a flip-up iron sight for emergency use in case of scope damage. Modern variants have a Picatinny-type scope rail on top of the receiver. The original Barrett M82 has a built-in carrying handle, while the modern versions come with quick detachable one. This rifle also has a detachable bipod. This weapon can be fitted with carry sling. However due to its size the Barrett M82 is usually carried in special case. There are all kinds of cases and range bags available for various weapons. Such as the best R15 soft case for your rifle. The unit cost of the M82 rifle is around $8,900. 400 of these effective sniper rifles should wreak havoc on the Venezuelan army given the thick cover of the Guyanese rainforest. The total for 400 of these work out to $3,560,000. Switchblade 600. The larger Switchblade 600 loitering munition weighs 54.5 kilograms, 120 pounds, including the all-up round in the tube and FCS. The hour weighs 22.7 kilograms, 50 pounds, with the FCS consisting of a tablet and long-range antenna. The system is man portable and can be set up in 10 minutes. It is designed to fly out to 40 kilometers, 25 miles, in 20 minutes, then loiter for another 20 minutes, giving it an 80 kilometers, 50 miles, total range, however reaching its maximum capable range requires using two long range antennas deployed on the field to relay command from one operator to another through the handoff capability of the data link. It attacks at a 115 miles per hour, 185 kilometers per hour, dash speed, carrying an ATGM warhead based on the Javelin ATGM, designed to neutralize armored vehicles. A touchscreen tablet-based fire control system can manually or autonomously control the munition. It is secured through onboard encrypted data links and selective availability anti-spoofing module GPS with a patented wave-off capability. 
An optional pocket digital data link DDL, module allows engagements beyond 90 km 56 miles. The larger switchblade could be fitted with an anti-tank warhead while having longer range and costing less than anti-tank missiles like the FGM-148 Javelin. The Switchblade 600 was developed for the Army's single multi-mission attack missile development program. This weapon have proven more than effective in the Russia-Ukraine war. The price of this weapon is $10,000. Assuming Guyana buys 2,500 of these, total cost for these would be $25 million. This quantity should be enough to wipe out all of Venezuela's armored divisions with other remaining that could be used to strike ports, ships, ammunition depots and command outposts. FIM-92 Stinger the FIM-92 Stinger is an American manned portable air defense system, MANPADS, that operates as an infrared homing surface-to-air missile, SAM. It can be adapted to fire from a wide variety of ground vehicles, and from helicopters as the air-to-air -air Stinger, ATAS. It entered service in 1981 and is used by the militaries of the United States and 29 other countries. It is principally manufactured by Raytheon Missiles and Defense and is produced under license by Airbus Defense and Space in Germany and by Rakhazan in Turkey. The FIM-92 Stinger is a passive surface-to-air missile that can be shoulder-fired by a single operator, although standard military procedure calls for two operators, team chief and gunner. The Stinger was intended to supplant the FIM-43 Red Eye system, the principal difference being that, unlike the Red Eye, the Stinger can acquire the target when the target approaches the operator, giving much more time to acquire and destroy the target. The FIM-92B missile can also be fired from the M-1097 Avenger and the M-6 Linebacker. The missile is also capable of being deployed from a Humvee Stinger rack, and can be used by airborne troops. A helicopter-launched version exists called Air-to-Air -Air Stinger, ATAS. The missile is 5.0 feet, 1.52 meters, long and 2.8 in, 70 millimeters, in diameter with 3.9 in, 100 millimeters, fins. The missile itself weighs 22 pounds, 10.1 kilograms, while the missile with its launch tube and integral sight, fitted with a grip stock and identification friend or foe, IFF, antenna, weighs approximately 34 pounds, 15.2 kilograms. It has a targeting range of up to 4,800 meters and can engage low-altitude enemy threats at up to 3,800 meters. The Stinger is launched by a small ejection motor that pushes at a safe distance from the operator before engaging the main two-stage solid fuel sustainer which accelerates it to a maximum speed of Mach 2.54, 750 meters per second. The warhead contains 1.02 kilograms, 2.25 pounds, of HTA-3, a mix of HMX, TNT, and aluminium powder, explosive with an impact fuse and a self-destruct timer that functions 17 seconds after launch. Venezuela have some Sukhoi fighter jet and some older American F-4s. We estimate about 60 Stinger missiles and 10 launch pads should be enough. Once Maduro see that his jets are being blown out of the sky he will not risk them and would prefer to use the ground troops. The Stinger is a proven weapon in anti-air operations. 60 Stinger missiles at a unit cost of $120,000 would equal to $7,200,000 and 10 Stinger launch pads at a cost of $150,000 would equal to $1,500,000, bringing total Stinger costs to $8,700,000. M4 Carbine The M4 Carbine, officially Carbine, Caliber 5.56 mm, M4, is a 5.56x45mm NATO, gas-operated, magazine-fed, carbine developed in the United States during the 1980s. It is a shortened version of the M16A2 assault rifle. The M4 is extensively used by the United States Armed Forces, with decisions to largely replace the M16 rifle in United States Army, starting 2010, and United States Marine Corps, USMC, starting 2016, combat units as the primary infantry weapon and service rifle. The M4 has been adopted by over 60 countries worldwide and has been described as one of the defining firearms of the 21st century. Since its adoption in 1994, the M4 has undergone over 90 modifications to improve the weapon's ergonomics and modularity, including, the M4A1, which strengthened the barrel and removed the burst fire option, the SOP mod, an accessory kit containing optical attachments, and the underbarrel M203 grenade launcher. The M4 and its variants fire 5.56x45mm NATO, and .223 Remington, ammunition, and are gas-operated, magazine-fed, selective fire firearms with either a multi-position telescoping stock or a fixed A2 or a tactical stock. The first stock fitted onto the M4 in 1985 was made entirely of plastic, which only had two positions, fully closed or fully extended. 
later models have greater adjustability and are commonly known as the six-position stock, M4 stock, or, because of its recesses, waffle stock. The M4 is a shorter and lighter variant of the M16A2 rifle, with 80% parts commonality. The M4's maneuverability makes it beneficial for non-infantry troops, vehicle crews, clerks, and staff officers, as well as for close quarters battle. The M4, along with the M16A4, has mostly replaced the M16A2 in the Army and Marines. The United States Air Force, for example, has transitioned completely to the M4 for Security Forces squadrons, while other armed personnel retain the M16A2. The United States Navy uses M4A1S for special operations and vehicle crews. However, the M4's shorter barrel reduces its range, with its rear iron sights integrated in the, removable, carry handle only adjustable from 300 meters, 328 yards, up to 600 meters, 656 yards, compared to the M16A2 rear iron sights integrated in the fixed carry handle, which can reach up to 800 meters, 875 yards. The M4 carbine fully decked out with sights should cost around $1,500 and an estimate need of 3,490 M4S would cost Guyana $5,235,000. AGM-114 Hellfire The AGM-114 Hellfire is an air-to-ground missile, AGM, first developed for anti-armor use, later developed for precision drone strikes against other target types, especially high-value targets. It was originally developed under the name Helleborn Laser, fire and forget missile, which led to the colloquial name Hellfire ultimately becoming the missile's formal name. It has a multi-mission, multi-target precision strike ability and can be launched from multiple air, sea, and ground platforms, including the Predator drone. The Hellfire missile is the primary 100-pound, 45-kilograms, class air-to-ground precision weapon for the armed forces of the United States and many other nations. It has also been fielded on surface platforms in the surface-to-surface -surface and surface-to-air roles. Most variants are laser-guided, with one variant, the AGM-114 liters longbow Hellfire, being radar-guided. Laser guidance can be provided either from the launcher, such as the nose-mounted optoelectronics of the AH-64 Apache attack helicopter, other airborne target designators or from ground-based observers, the latter two options allowing the launcher to break line of sight with the target and seek cover. The development of the Hellfire missile system began in 1974 with the United States Army requirement for a tank buster, launched from helicopters to defeat armored fighting vehicles. The Hellfire II, developed in the early 1990s as a modular missile system with several variants, and entered service with the United States Army in 1996. Hellfire II's semi-active laser variants, AGM-114K High Explosive Anti-Tank, HEAT, agm 114 Key with External Blast Fragmentation Sleeve, AGM-114M, Blast Fragmentation, and AGM-114N Metal Augmented Charge, MAC achieve pinpoint accuracy by homing in on a reflected laser beam aimed at the target. The General Atomics MQ-1 Predator and MQ-9 Reaper Unmanned Combat Aerial Vehicles UCAVs, carry the Hellfire II, but the most common platform is the AH-1Z Viper helicopter gunship, which can carry up to 16 of them. The AGM-114 Liters, or Longbow Hellfire, is a fire-and-forget weapon, equipped with a millimeter wave MMW, active radar homing. It requires no further guidance after launch, even being able to lock on to its target after launch, and can hit its target without the launcher or other friendly unit being in line of sight of the target. It also works in adverse weather and battlefield obscurance, such as smoke and fog, which can mask the position of a target or prevent a designating laser from forming a detectable reflection. Each Hellfire weighs 47 kilograms, 104 pounds, including the 9 kilograms, 20 pounds, warhead, and has a range of 7.1 to 11 kilometers. 4.4 to 6.8 miles, depending on trajectory. The AGM-114 R Romeo Hellfire II entered service in late 2012. It uses a semi-active laser homing guidance system and a K-charge multi-purpose warhead to engage targets that formerly needed multiple Hellfire variants. It will replace AGM-114K, M, N, and P variants in United States service. In October 2012, the United States ordered 24,000 Hellfire II missiles, for both the United States Armed Forces and foreign customers. A possible new JCM successor called the Joint Air-to-Ground Missile JAGM, is under consideration. Due to budget reductions, JAGM development was separated into increments, with increment 1 focusing on adding a millimeter wave radar to the Hellfire R to give it a dual-mode seeker, enabling it to track moving targets in bad weather. 
Guyana can use the Hellfire missile to attack Venezuela's larger ships, smaller patrol crafts could be targeted with the switchblade drones, but the Hellfire should be used to disable the larger vessels. These could be fitted to regular Guyanese fishing boats and carry out strikes from 10 kilometers. One of these missile costs $150,000 and an estimated need of 50 would bring total Hellfire missile costs to $7,500,000. Conclusion In conclusion, let's go over the list of weapons that are needed in our estimation. 400 M82 sniper rifles costing $3,560,000. 2,500 switchblade 600 drones costing $25 million. 60 stinger missiles and 10 launch pads costing $8,700,000. 3,490 M4 carbines costing $5,235,000. And finally, 50 Hellfire missiles costing $7,500,000. That brings total costs to $49,995,000. This might seem like a lot of money, but with these weapons and Guyana making it known that it has these weapons, Venezuela will second-guess any invasion plans and it might deter a war. But if Maduro do decide to try and provoke a war, it will be a suicide mission if these weapons and weapon systems are deployed effectively. As General Douglas MacArthur said, no man is entitled to the blessings of freedom unless he be vigilant in its preservation. Until next time, take care.